Well, Bernard asked us about um, Capco. He says to me, Frant, I, I want to buy some Capco. Um, and I, when you know what, when I bought um, uh, Interproperties, I also thought about Capco. But um, by then, it was like that Capco was actually a better buy. Uh, Interproperties was a better buy uh, because of, of the rentals, but suddenly that disappointed. But if you look at the Capco, Capco, weekly chart, line chart, Look at your 40-week moving average, Bernard. It's still cloping to the downside. It's falling off a cliff. I will not buy it. I will wait for at least a little bit of a consolidation. Or maybe if you really are keen to buy it, and remember this is a weekly chart. Let's get you a level there. It will be above this little line there, and that will be above 35.28. The first higher low will be in place. But keep in mind, viewers, all stocks get its turn. We waited for the gold stocks for many years and it came and the guys that held on to it and waited for it and timed it well, they made a lot of money. So property stocks, their time will also come. Well, let's have a look at Discovery. Leon bought some Discovery and um, he's now very disappointed because the stock is turning upside down. But let's look at it. Leon, unfortunately, this looks like it's one of those fallen heroes that we've talked about so many times on the show. And I can remember when the stock was rallying this, and we had a call many, well, it's, it's three, four years, well, two, year, two and a half years ago, somebody phoned in and said, listen, he wants to buy Discovery. But at that point in time, we started to see these lower highs. And I was a little bit nervous. And I, I can remember that I said on the show, listen, guys, let's just have a look at this 40-week moving average. Every time that Discovery gets to this 40-week moving average, it finds resistance there or it finds some buy a sellers there. And what happened? The chart was right. There was the high, there was a lower high, another lower high, another lower high. And at the moment, what worries me the most is, is that it took out this low. You see, that's my problem. My problem is that this was like a support that kept the stock going. But when it broke below 108 and 15 cents, it almost fell off a cliff. Now, well, we know now it falls in a straight line to the downside. Of course, we'll see a bounce unless there's something wrong fundamentally with the company. And we've seen it now over and over. When a stock starts to fall, and you remember Steinoff, we thought, first of all, it is just profit taking taking place. And later on, we thought, okay, this may be a problem with... Um, um, single stock futures or CFDs or that guys needs to close the positions and then only later on we heard that there was something fundamentally wrong with the company and that also started well this stock is also telling us something is wrong either the company needs to um, consolidate and give us some higher lows here but for the mean for the meantime Leon unfortunately I will not buy the stock and I don't know where did you buy the stock yet if you did buy it, maybe at 180 Rand, it sounds stupid, but then maybe it is too late to lock in your your um, your loss. But remember always, if you want to take your loss, then you must take your loss and find something else. But um, again, this week shows us stocks are a risky business, and sometimes you can lose money if the stock suddenly turns against you. Let's have a look at Cecil. He's a keen buyer of Cecil. And he believes that the stock is offering some value. And um, I will maybe just show you what we've seen many a months ago. And we, we talked about this head and shoulder for a long time. Let's just have a look here. Uh, let's go to a weekly chart first to show the viewers there. Cecil. Now, it, if you look at Cecil here, it's the weekly chart. Same story, all, almost like a... a uh, discovery just fell off a cliff. Now let's have a look here. We looked at this in this head and shoulder for a long time. And, and I actually said on the show, I really hope that I'm completely wrong and that it will not play out because it's such a beautiful company um, that treated investors so well over years. But look at it. There was the left shoulder. There's the massive head. There's the right shoulder. What worried me, I can remember on the show, I said what worries me is this negative goodbye kiss that Cecil gave us. Now, look what is happening here. First of all, it, if I use that conservative target, and I'll show you now the, the full target of the stock. There's the full target. That's the conservative target. 
it reached that the target was at 299 let's call it 300 rand it just went there and it went past there and this is the full target if this head and shoulder formation plays out to the bottom can you believe it and we can maybe see Sassel if it plays out to the full all the way let's just get level there all the way there you are 220 rand now, it i think if i look at this chart i will just say sit on your hands don't buy well and well you bought and i know you bought some but don't add to your position because it looks like it's falling off a cliff. and what worries me rand is weakening the world price is more or less stable rand that's weakening should have supported sussel but it does not and this worries me it's below the 40 week moving average it's falling off a cliff with a stronger uh, with a weaker rand and it i can see no turnaround on a weekly chart then. so if you want to buy let's go to a daily chart then just to show if there's maybe a chance of, of buying or adding on to his position and fortunately if you look at it at bearish candle bearish candle i thought the day before yesterday this little hammer should give us a bounce well that hammer just told us listen boys we want to go even lower and it just went lower so for me first signal of strength will be let's draw in this line there will be this resistance line if it can overcome the resistance here and that will be the high of this little hammer of the other day at 295.17 so for the moment it unfortunately momentum to the downside my friend um i cannot see at the moment a turn around here but as we know stocks will sometime turn around on a basis so let's just have a look well, since we, since we look at the S&P 500, he says to me, Franz, I'm a keen buyer of the S&P 500 and I, I like to trade it. And let's have a look. And S&P 500. Now, since we, if I look at the S&P 500 and, and me and Christelle had a chat about it yesterday because we, we talked about the local market and even the, the S&P 500 and, and we were trying to see what is happening with the S&P 500, if you think about the, the local market. But if I look at this chart of the S&P 500, I mean, from two to, let's just take it from 2016. This um, index rallied from, let's call it 1,900 points, 2,000, almost 3,100 points the other day. I mean, if you look at this chart and you can compare that to the local chart, it just shows you that we're in two different worlds. The S&P 500 is right at the top. We've seen a little bit of a pullback and... If we've got time, I'll, I'll go and have a look at the, the base E now, the base E overall index, just show you. If you look at this, this index is still very bullish. Even if you if you look at that fell that we saw late last year, that just this drop in the price, it just bounced off there. Yeah. And and I showed this on the program before. Yes, there is maybe an inverse head and shoulder brewing here. And I can maybe just show the viewers there. Look at this if you look at this chart it's working on this massive rising wedge so there's two conflicting scenarios here the rising wedge can either break to the downside and that will be at this 40 week moving average at 2800 it can give us a, a, a back to about 2500 of course the bulls say listen guys america's economy is still strong and this is the inverse head and shoulder let's just show you here you are and that will be left shoulder right shoulder left shoulder head right shoulder now so this way the best is to either wait for this resistance of the neckline and that is sitting at 2,964 um turn into a support and then buy or wait for the support break at this 40 week moving average that i've just shown you but if i compare the s p 5 and we'll look at the the, the jc overall index now you will see it is two different worlds so Siswe, be careful just to say that the S&P 500 must go higher or even drop. It's two scenarios here, but let's have a look at the JSE overall index. Let's have a look at that. Uh, I usually like that. Uh, let's see. There you are, JSE overall is guiding. Let's take the, well, the chart will do the exactly the same as will be the top 40. Let's go to the top 40 because we're running out of time here. Look at this chart. 
Now, if you look at this chart and you want to compare it with the S&P 500, look at what happens there. There you are. We've seen this beautiful rally from 2010. The difference is we are now below 40-week moving average. And what worries me about the chart is we've got this line, strong support that we looked at for, for many months, almost like with the gold price, we looked at this the support that is at 44,000. There you are, 44,000. Look at the symmetrical triangle. There you are. This is this massive symmetrical triangle. So either it's going to break above 52,000, take it way above to 58,000, or if this 44,000, it can break all the way and break the index down to 37,000. My first worry, of course, is this break below the 40-week moving average. And as we know, a break below the 40-week moving average usually signals medium to long-term investors so careful because this index can go lower. Yes, you know, for, for a couple of years, it hovered around it, and every time that anybody said, listen, it's below the 40-week average, uh, be careful, it just rushed off and, and, and rallied to new highs again. I will say again, so, and where's my next warning? My next place to worry about this index will be below this low, and that is below 47,670. So, while the index cannot get above this 52,000 level, I favor the downside here and I'm nervous because below 47,670, this index can go all the way down to this 44,000 level. And then from there, I don't even want to think about it. And what worries me, if the S&P 500, and I've said it on the show before, if the S&P 500 goes down, the normal JZ overall or the JZ top 40 will not last. Thank you so much. We're out of time and we'll talk again.